Guess what today is? It's book review day! These are the books I read in April. Actually, I didn't read all of them. A lot of them were audiobooks that I like to do while driving and, and other things. Um, but I do love audiobooks for the fact that books like this are read by the author. That makes them a lot of fun. So I've got Goodreads up on my computer. I like to use Goodreads for remembering what the heck I read so that I don't read things twice. And also for making some comments so that I can remember if I liked a book or not. So let's take a look. Go through this here stack. First up we have Michael J. Fox, No Time Like the Future. Let's see what I had to say about that. An enjoyable audiobook if you like Michael J. Fox. His reading has gravity to the pitfalls that come his way, and this book is more or less an update of his life since the first two. It's not over-the-top joy stuff or optimism like his first two books were, but shows the reality of declining physical aptitude. In that sense, it is a good reminder to enjoy what we have now while we grow older. Um, it was all of that. And it uh, to hear the audiobook, you hear the difference in his voice and, from the last two audiobooks, which is a great way to kind of keep up with people. And it is an interesting read if you like Michael J. Fox. Boom! Next up, Live or Live from Death Valley. This is interesting if you ever want to go to Death Valley or if you have an interest in the National Park. It talks about the history of time uh, with settlers coming into the area, some of the famous ones that it, uh, some of its features are named after, things like that. So let's see what I had to say. My one whole sentence on Live from Death Valley is an enjoyable, easy read that delivers history of Death Valley with some of the author's travel notes from decades ago. This was written a while ago, or at least the author took a drive um, quite a long time ago, back in the 70s and 80s. So his take on it's a little bit different than what it might be today, but it does give you some great history. Next up, we have Friends, Lovers, Chocolate. I don't know why I got this book. Um, it's number two in a series, and it's obviously um, something lighter. When Isabel is asked to cover for vacationing cat at her delicatessen, she meets a man with the most interesting problem. I don't know why I got this book, but I had it on my shelf, and this year I'm trying to get everything off my shelf that I haven't read yet. So let's see what I actually had to say about Friends Lover Chocolate. All right, I wrote, it is part of a series, but I didn't understand that when I bought the first book, which was actually the second book, duh. But you don't have to have read the first book because the author does a quick recap, which took only a few pages. It's nice when authors do that. And the fact that it only took a few pages meant I didn't miss a lot in the first book. This is an easy beach read kind of book and a whole pretense hinges on just one or two Assumptions and misunderstandings. Those kind of books annoy me. Um, actually, those storylines in movies annoy me when there's just one little issue and it's because two people misunderstood each other and 150 pages later, they're still misunderstanding each other. Yeah, they kind of annoy me. So uh, this is good if you do want a light beach read. <coughs> okay, coming your way, eruption. The Untold Story of Mount St. Helens by Steve Olson. Um, I got this book, actually I started listening to the audiobook and then bought the book afterwards because um, I do that because I'm weird. And it uh, it's great if you uh, were in Washington or remember um, the eruption. I guess you could have been in Oregon, Idaho, or probably anywhere in the United States back in uh, 1980 when it blew up. I was uh, living up north and I remember driving south on I-5 because we call it I-5 there, not the five like Californians. And we're getting off of the exit. I think we'd probably been to like a baseball game or something, it was a Sunday. Uh, and we got off the exit and we could see in the distance this big plume that looked like a uh, mushroom, like a mushroom cloud that you're supposed to know about from nuclear explosions. But it was Mount St. Helens going off. Um, so I remember it well, and that's why I was curious about this book. Let's see what I said. Ooh, this is short. A good recap of what happened in 1980 and the lead up. Good info for those curious about it or who witnessed it. Uh, so it does go through a lot of the people in the area and where they were and why they were there, people that died, people that lived, and uh, it does a, a pretty good job of covering that part of the history. So it's interesting if you like mountains, explosions, or if you uh, lived in the area. 
Okay, now a classic. Evidently, I think everything by Dan Brown is a classic. So Dan Brown, Digital Fortress. This was written in, gosh, let's see here, uh, 1998. So it's a little dated. Um, the tech in it is quite simple and stuff that we take for granted now. But let's see what I said. I think I liked it. I remember liking it. Enjoyable and fast paced. The ending annoyed me when I had to figure it out, when I had it figured out and pages went by and they ignored the obvious. That part bugged me. I won't give you the spoiler, but the last 10, 15 pages, the answer was kind of right there and they just didn't get it. Uh, I would read more of his books. So I haven't read a lot of Dan Brown books, um, but it was an easy page turner. Some chapters were only like a page or two. Uh, so that makes it easy. makes you feel like you're flying through it. All right. Now for the lemon of the month, that would be detour from normal. Can you see that? Not sure if it's too shiny. Detour from normal is a uh, um, Ken Dixon's account of uh, mania and dealing with that, his personal bout with it. Uh, let's see what I had to say. Self-centered and filled with use, useless details about minutia. So the minutia in this book really bugged me that he was getting into a bunch of things with, maybe they were great for his journal as far as how he remembered them, but they didn't really help anything like how he was making a sandwich and what was on it and just some of the minutia, it just kept bogging the book down. Uh, and it wasn't as well written as there's another book that I had on my list. Let me see if I can find it. It is called Girl Walks Out of a Bar by Lisa F. Smith. And it's just a little more compelling story about her dealing with addiction, um, but also not making it all about her. Well, it is obviously about her. I'm not sure how that works, um, but it was a much more compelling read. And so I would suggest that one instead of Detour from Normal. All right, last book of the month is The Piano Tuner. Again, not sure why I got this one. I probably got it like at a used bookstore or swap meet or something. Uh, it's been on my shelf for quite a while. I enjoyed it quite a bit, it, um, but it didn't really do much for me. I enjoyed it because it gave me a lot of history on Burma and it, it gets, it's set in the 1800s. So it starts at about the 1840s, goes up to the 1880s or so, and talks about the colonial, colonialization of Burma by the British as well as India and some other places. But then it just kind of gets a little murky and mucky and it gets into other subjects that just kind of, meh. Let's see what I said about it. A good story with historical roots. I learned some of Burma in the 1800s and of pianos because it's centered on a piano. He's a tuner. The story was okay and interesting and an interesting twist at the end. So it was all right. I gave it three stars. I guess I should have told you what I gave each of these. Hang on a second. Let's do a little recap. Piano tuner, two star, or three stars. Sorry, three stars. An okay read. Detour from normal, two stars. Digital Fortress, four stars. As dated as it was, I like the writing. Eruption, also four stars. Friends, lovers, chocolate. I give it three stars. Live from Death Valley, four stars. Great historical context. And lastly, Michael J. Fox, no time like the future. I gave four stars. I don't often give many five stars, uh, but these four stars are definitely up there and they're books that I would read again. So again, here's all the books. I'll see you next month. Keep reading.